You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Queen Gaming. It's Sunny Mounts, one of the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Santa Lucia Nate's Path. So I'm running the latest updated version, so we should have all the content currently up to date. Anyway, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alright, alright. <clears throat> well, it's not like I'm a unicorn. Horror is a popular genre for a reason. I suppose I feel a lot of kinship with the typical protagonist. They're often outcasts, looked down on by society for one reason or another. Their struggles with the evils within the pages can be read allegorically most of the time. He closes the book and stuffs it in his backpack beneath the seat. Uh, for example, let's take a protagonist who struggles with their identity. They could be denying something about themselves or learning to come to terms with a part of who they are. That's when you throw a monster at them to challenge their preconceived notions. How do they react? Will they fight to overcome the obstacle, or will they retreat into their bad habits and doom themselves? I watch Nate as he gestures his hands in the air to accompany his mini-lecture. I think that's why I like horror so much. The protagonists aren't larger than life, they're just people like you and me fighting against impossible odds. Their journey may be terrifying, but that makes the eventual victory that much sweeter. Interesting, I never gave it that much thought, honestly. That's why I'm not a big fan of the recent trends in the genre. My ears perk up. Oh, what would those be? Pyrrhic victories. Even if the protagonist survives, the cost was so great that they might as well have lost. Ah, yeah. I can think of several popular television shows that fit that description to a T. The general audience seems more interested in blood, guts, and gore of the genuine human conflict that sits at the core of the genre. Just look at how romanticized the killers and slasher movies are. The less said about Hollywood's portrayal of horror, the better. I nod my head in understanding. That's probably why I never got into the genre. I've never been introduced to the good stuff, it seems. <laughs> oh, I'd love to give you some recommendations if you're interested. Right now? I have some books I can lend you sitting in a box in my closet. I'll lend you some when we get back. Well, let's not forget we have all this reading we have to do for literature class. Sorry, I got a little excited there. I've never had anyone I could talk to about books before. Not even your parents? Ooh. He folds his arms at the mention of them. No. Huh. Good going, Ben. Now you made him upset. So, sorry, I didn't mean to... It's okay, don't worry about it. It's just a sore spot for me, that's all. Yeah, I hear ya. I sighed, leaned back in the chair. Without really meaning to, my gaze returns to the scenery rolling out by the window. I guess I just have a lot going on in my head right now. I'll let you get back to your book in peace. That's all this little talk ended up being. A distraction. Something to get my mind off of everything that happened out there. Ben. A familiar fox face slowly creeps into my vision as he leans forward to look at me. You should have just said you wanted to talk. I would have understood. Hmm? When I return my attention back to him, he pulls back and returns to his seat. There you go. Water time. It's about last night, isn't it? Well... I, I figured you'd point... You didn't want to talk about it either, so that's why I didn't make a big deal out of it. Huh. I fold my arms and lean my head against the window. Man, everything just went to shit all of a sudden. First I have a fight with Russell, then Dr. Hernandez ends up dead, and then there was... I have to catch myself before continuing on to the weird shit I saw late last night. Um, freaking po police interviews? Ugh, tell me about it. They treated us like dirt. As if any of us had a motive to kill her. I didn't even know she was at the park for crying out loud. My ears perk up at that, at that peculiar statement. What do you mean? Wasn't she there at dinner giving a speech about civic duty or some shit? Excuse me. He seems genuinely dumbfounded at what I said. I raise an eyebrow at him. Yeah, she was there at dinner, don't you remember? Blah, 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 community service, blah, blah, making the world a better place. You guys were all talking about how the service trip went when we showed up, when she showed up. I don't have the slightest clue of what you're talking about, darling. Ugh. I'm feeling that creepy tingle crawling up my spine again. Ben, you fell asleep at the table. I even tried waking you up, but you were stiff as a log. I... My vision starts to blur. The shock seems to be flooding my eyes with tears. One minute you were there, and then the next you were gone. Luckily, Zack saw you heading for the Overlook. I can't believe what I'm hearing. So you're saying Dr. Hernandez wasn't there that evening? Ben, that's impossible. 
She drowned in the river around 2 p.m. yesterday. Oh my god. What the hell is going on? What the fuck? I comb my hair back with my fingers while I process this new tidbit of information. You can't be serious. Did I, did I dream it all up? Ben? Ben, are you alright? I shake my head. Look, I'm gonna tell you something right now. Please, don't think any less of me because of it, okay? Ben, you're scaring me. I really don't know who else to turn to. Okay, you can count on me, then. Ha. Huh. I take a deep breath before continuing. This is so hard to say. You already know about my nightmares, but... Sometimes I swear they feel like real life. How so? I don't know. It's like they're realistic enough that I can't tell the difference between what's a dream and real sometimes. But then you wake up, right? This question makes the fur on the back of my neck stand on end for some reason. I hope so. Jeez. He turns his gaze forward, forward towards the front of the bus. If it's any consolation, I can tell you with 100% certainty that I am real. Nate, this is serious. I am being serious, silly. Oh, water time. No oh, to hiccups. Bad hiccups. No. He grabs one of my hands and puts it on his chest. Can you feel my heartbeat? I desperately fight back a blush caused by his unexpected behavior. Yeah. That's how you can tell I'm real, okay? If ever I'm around and you feel this way, I give you permission to check my heartbeat. Nate. He's really going out of his way to comfort me and humor my condition? Great. Now I'm turning into sideshow Ben from a new group of friends. It's... I take a deep breath and hold it in for a moment before exhaling. Ha! Ah, thank you, but you don't need to do this. I shouldn't have told you. You've got enough to worry about as is. What I have are just nightmares. Everyone has them. Mine are just a bit more vivid than usual, that's all. There's no need to drag the guy I have a crush on into my problems. Are you sure? I nod my head. Yeah, positive. I see. For a moment, he looks really dejected. Well, in any case, I stand by my offer. He reaches down to his backpack and pulls out the book again. I think, uh, I think I'll be finished with this book by tomorrow if I keep plugging away at it. Hope you don't mind if I put on some earbuds. Knock yourself out. Thanks. <laughs> he quickly retreats back into the world within the pages, leaving me alone with my thoughts. Even from back here, I'm able to get a good view of what everyone else is doing. A couple of rows up, Karina and Shay are sitting together. They seem to be talking about something, but I can't quite hear it over the sound of the bus driving. All things considered, they seem to be in pretty high spirits. At the front of the bus, Chris sits alongside Layla. Chris has a clipboard pulled out, and the two of them seem to be filling out some paperwork. I can't imagine they're having a great time right now, either. They probably knew the president better than anyone else on this bus. I wonder what the other mentors are going to say when they find out the news. And speaking of people taking the news hard... Zack sits in a row all to himself. He hasn't said a word to me since we got back to the cabin. I can see his reflection in the window. He looks very distant. I wonder if he knew Dr. Hernandez, too. You're such a weird dude, Zack. What the hell were you up to in the forest last night, anyway? I doubt he'll ever, ever give an answer to me. Oh, well. I pull out my phone and check the time. We should probably be getting back to campus in about two hours. The quicker I can put this day behind me, the better. The bus pulls into the parking lot a little after 10 p.m. The first thing we do the moment we step out of the vehicle is gather into our mentorship groups. Looking around, it's clear we're the last ones returning to campus. Not another bus in sight. Chris gathers his things and meets up with us, looking more somber than usual. All right, I hope everyone's here. Take a meal. Water time. I think so. Let's see, there's Ben, Nate, Carlos. Uh, wait, what about Zach? Should he be with us? I'm right here. Zach steps up from behind the panda. Ha, you scared me. How long were you standing there? I've been behind you the whole time. I followed you out the bus too, didn't you see me? I, I guess not. Brian puts a hand behind his head and smiles nervously. You should try speaking up, dude. Ugh. Oh, excuse me. Looks like we're all present accounted for, Chris. That's good. 
Did everyone grab their luggage before getting off the bus? Yuppers. Is there anything we need to do now? No, no. I'll handle the rest of the paperwork and make sure y'all get credit for attendance. Though, there's supposed to be some representatives from school here to greet us. Hmm. What for? Chris's expression turns grim again. Well, this was a traumatic experience for everyone. Sniper. I'm the sniper. Okay. We're supposed to get psychological evaluations from a few of the school counselors. Oh. I feel this tingling sensation in the back of my head again. It sounds fun. It's slowly crawling its way down my spine. You're not expected to attend, but I think it would be for best if everyone does. It comes to rest at a spot a little bit below my left shoulder blade. Pain is intense. I feel very dizzy all of a sudden. Shit, this isn't right. I think I'd rather just go to bed if you don't mind. The pain feels like something lodged itself inside me. I can't let anyone else know something's wrong, though. And they'll think they'll make me safe for counseling and whatever else they have in mind. I step away from the group and shot heading for the dorm building. Are you sure you don't want to stay, Ben? What's there to talk about? I'd rather not dwell on it. What happened happened. There's nothing we can do to change it. I don't mean to say it be so blunt, but... I suppose you're right. Sometimes it's better to just rip the bandage off instead of pulling it away slowly. Zach, are you ready to go? I look back trying to spot my roommate, but he's nowhere to be found. Huh. Did he already leave? I didn't even see him go. Ugh, yeah, looks like he did. I shrugged my shoulders. Something unusual for him. He acts like a ghost sometimes. It's just who he is. I give everyone a big wave before taking off. I'll see everyone later. The pain in my back feels like it's twisting. What the hell's wrong with me? Without a second thought, I make a beeline for the dorm entrance. Hey, wait for me! My ears perk up when I hear someone chasing after me. Eh? If I didn't know any better, I'd say you were trying to ditch us. That's not what I'm doing. <laughs> I know, I'm just teasing you. I hold back a groan. If you're not going to stay for counseling, then I'm not either. Not feeling up to someone digging around in your skull for dirt, huh? Water time. Hmm. That's one way to put it. But yeah, I think I'm doing fine on my own so far. How about you? How are you holding up? I shrug my shoulders. How? It only serves to aggravate the pain in my back. I'm fine, I guess. I'm fine enough, I guess. Can't say I'm thinking about it any more than I have to. No, my mind's on other things right now. Not a bad idea. He shoves his hands in his pockets as we walk to the dorms together in relative silence. It's a somewhat unexpected gesture coming from him. Usually he's super exuberant with trying to maintain a conversation. I suppose even the most extroverted types know when to dial it back. Excuse me, before long I find myself sliding my ID card down the sensor to unlock the doorway. I hold the door open for the fox. Thank you, darling. We stand together for a moment at the foot of the stairs. I put a hand behind my head and say the first thing that comes to mind but mind to break the silence. That was quite the trip, wasn't it? If it wasn't for, well, the thing that happened, I would have said I had a good time. Really? Yuppers. It's not very often I get to see untouched nature like that. My family hardly ever traveled while I was growing up. Why is that? Too expensive? No. He shakes his head and frowns. We couldn't leave the orchard unattended for long periods of time. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm going to give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank you all for all you do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. And thank you to our gold tier patron, Amr. Thank you for subscribing to our ultimate tier. You're awesome. We love you. We hope you enjoy your new icon. Anyway... If y'all want to get your names in the credits and get access to our Not Safe for Work contents, as little as $5. Anyway, I love you all, and I shall see y'all in the next video. Bye-bye!